Now, I'm sure a lot of people have been thinking about this. You know, I've seen a lot of reactions from people, some positive, some not so positive. But, you know, back in the 180 issues, uh, when Silver first appeared, we pretty much found out what his story plot was. His story plot was basically he would go back in time and no matter what time he went back to, would try to find the traitor that caused his world to be destroyed. Now, we pretty much know that one of those timelines he went back in time to was a Mobius Years Later timeline. And he might have gotten a little bit of a hint as to who the traitor could have been. But along, but besides that, and along with that, you know, he's gone through different time zones. Most importantly, he's always shown up in the prime zone, where, where Sonic's at. And apparently, as we all know, Sonic and his friends are not too thrilled sometimes when he shows up because he's always showing up looking for somebody that he feels betrayed the team. But I want to ask you this. In 247, which recently came out, and this is spoilers in case anybody doesn't know, well, anybody that does know, you probably read the summaries, um, Silver basically reveals that Sally is the traitor. Now, of course, you can pretty much see the reaction from Sonic and Amy, they're not too thrilled to hear that. But, he goes on to explain, thanks to the help of Tails, that he's not there that that basically after getting his anonymous getting his help from an anonymous source Harvey who that is that he's come to realize that Sally being the traitor is not of her free will and that basically he in mostly history in the past 200 years that he in the past 200 years into his future, into his timeline, had basically lost all its historical facts. Basically misinterpreted the historical facts about Sally being the traitor. So, the obvious question, Eschen is, the obvious questions are, one, who pretty much saw this coming? And two, do you think, honestly, and I want an honest answer here. I want an honest answer. Do you think for the 65, for the 65 plus issues since he's been, since he's made his comic book debut, Trying to look for this traitor, if you will. Do you think... Do you think it's been worth it? Do you think the build-up... The subplots... The the story arcs that he's been in... I mean... Let, let's face it. Like I said, he's been in Mobius years later. The 30 year later version. He's been in the... In the Dark Freedom Fighters, this, his own arc in Sonic Universe, looking for the traitor. He's even been part of the Secret Freedom Fighters. But the question is, do you think all this build-up to find out that the traitor is not one of their free will was worth it? Do you think it was worth it? I understand some will defend and say yeah it was worth it because if you're a new reader you pretty much didn't see that coming however being long time readers and stuff you'll probably say yeah it was worth it but it was a pretty much given as soon as 2.30 happened yeah, that's true it was a pretty much given 
But do you think out of all these story arcs that Ian Flynn wrote for Silver that it's paid off? I I'm, I'm just want some answers here. Do you think it paid off? Honestly, <laughs> I have to say I, I don't think it really paid off that much. I mean, I mean, in a sense it did, but, you know, if, if I was Ian, I would have thrown a lot more red herrings out there because ever since 2.30, it was, you know, let's be honest, it was a pretty much a, give, a giveaway who the, traitor, who the traitor was going to be or be revealed as. And it was also pretty much a giveaway that it would be a traitor of not the own free will. So if I was Ian, I would have kept throwing around some red herrings, even after 2.30. I would have thrown in the red herrings of this character or that character. I mean, a lot of people pretty much thought Jeffrey St. John could have been the traitor, but he's not. So, you know, and even some people feel, hey, Bunny's gone off, probably got herself legionized, she's the traitor. But she wasn't part of the original four. But again, even out of those original four or five or whatever you want to call them, you could have thrown around some red herrings to really kind of keep people guessing. Because even, you know, even longtime fans guessing, because... You know, let's be honest. Newer fans, long-time fans, whether, you know, whether they like Ian Flynn's writing or they don't like it, um, you know, have pretty much all agreed that it was a it was a given as soon as Sally was roboticized that she would be revealed as Silver's traitor. It was pretty much a given. But again, the question was, was it worth it? Was it worth possibly going through all this? Now, I know some people might say, because I've even thought thought about this, they might say, well, yeah, you know, Silver may have found out who the traitor is, even if it's not of their own free will. But what happens if he shows up, goes back, in t goes back to his time, and nothing's changed? You see? And we all know how Ian Flynn works. He likes to, you know, really, as Paul Kaminsky said in an interview, you can find here at, on YouTube at Think About Inc., I think, uh, the YouTube channel. Pretty much Ian likes to dabble in many areas. And one of the areas he likes to do sometimes is add a twist, like a shock value or whatever, a surprise. So... And I'm sure, so I'm sure a lot of people are looking at this and say, yeah, Sally being the traitor is a given. But then again, some might think, what if, you know, what happens after, you know, she's restored and stuff like that and Silver goes back to his timeline and nothing's changed? Then what? You see what I'm saying? But again, getting back to my question, my question is, do you think it was worth it? Do you think Ian writing all these stories that he did, do you think it was worth it for a silver sub-arc to lead to this moment? Do you think it was worth it? Because when you think about it, when you think about it, wouldn't you have been, wouldn't you have liked to have been wouldn't you have liked, even as a long-time or short-time reader or a new reader, wouldn't you like to have basically been given more red herrings so it wasn't too obvious? I'm just saying. I mean, I'm pretty sure if he decides to give us a twist and, you know, Sil and show that Silva's timeline hasn't changed much, nothing's changed, yeah, that's going to be a big twist right there and a big red herring that perhaps Sally is not the traitor. It caused all the damage. So, but I, I just want your opinions on this, folks. What, do you, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think, again, it was worth it? Do you think Ian's build of Silver's traitor arc arc was worth was worth it so far?
or do you think he could have done more with it? Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. But I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about this. Because I do find it intriguing. But let me know what you, let me, let me know what you guys think. And I'll talk to you all later. But again, do you think it was worth it? We might have some debate over that.